Hello friends, welcome back. In the previous tutorials, we understood that algorithms, pseudocode and flowcharts are problem solving tools or techniques. We use them to design various solutions to the given problem. Flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm or a pseudocode. It is used to graphically represent the flow of execution of a program or program logic. It has set of graphical shapes or geometrical shapes which we use to draw or create or design a flowchart. Oval shape is used to indicate start and end of the program logic. Parallelogram is used to indicate input and output operations. Rectangle shape is used to indicate operations like assignment, expressions, etc. Diamond shape indicates the decision operation or conditions. Hexagon shape indicates the loop iterations or repetitions. Arrows indicate direction or flow of execution of the program. If flowchart spreads to more than one page, then circle shape is used to indicate the connection between them. We should remember that we are going to solve a problem using the computer. As computer has no self-intelligence or natural intelligence, we need to tell the computer how to solve a given problem by providing a step-by-step -step set of well-defined instructions. There are two different persons who use computers normally, an end user and a programmer. End user uses the computer to solve his problems easily, whereas programmer uses the computer to solve end user problems by creating or developing softwares. While designing solutions, it is programmer's responsibility to think with respect to a computer as well as end user. That is, whenever we create a program or develop a software, we need to think with respect to a computer and user. There is an user. He wants to know whether a number is even or odd. That is, he wants to give a number to a computer. In return, he expects that computer should tell him the given number is even or odd. So, there is a problem in front of the programmer. That is, find the given number is even or odd. So, as a programmer, we need to understand and analyze the problem and design a solution to the problem. Let's do it. We can analyze the problem something like this. User gives a number. We need to put that number in a memory temporarily. So, we need to create one memory location to hold that number. Second step is display enter a number on the computer screen to indicate that now user can enter a number. Once the user enters the number, we should take that number and store that number into a created memory location that is a variable. Next step is to take that number, we should take the number and divide it by 2. According to mathematics, we know that a number divisible by 2 is even number. If a number is not completely divisible by 2, that is known as odd number. That means, if we divide a number by 2, if the remainder is equivalent to 0, then the number is even number. If we divide a number by 2, if the remainder is 1, then the given number is odd. That's it. That is the analysis we need to do. After that, all we need to do is, we need to write a algorithm. We need to create algorithm because we have to tell everything computer by providing a well-defined set of instructions. Now, we have analyzed the problem. Already, I have written an algorithm you can see here and we are going to understand that. You can see here, I have written an algorithm to find the given number is odd or even. Step 1, start. Step 2, declare a variable number. Because user is going to enter a number, we need to hold that number in some variable, right? That variable name is number. Step 3, display enter a number. Now, the computer has to display the string enter a number on the screen to indicate that user can enter a number now. So, user is going to enter some number, maybe 4 or 5 or any number. That number we need to take and put into the variable number. That is the next step. Read the value in a variable number. Once we store the value in the variable number, then we go to step 5 and we have written here, if number mod 2 results to 0, then print even, else print odd. This step is an important step. Mod is an operator. What it does means, it returns the remainder. Instead of returning the quotient, it returns the remainder. Division operator returns quotient. Mod operator returns remainder. So, it's a very simple algorithm. Step 6 is stop. That's it. We can translate that algorithm to pseudocode. 
You can see here the pseudo code is very simple with respect to the basic programming language we have written here. First step is start, then dim number. Dim is a keyword in basic programming language which is used to define a memory. So here we are defining a memory with the name number. It is same like declaring a variable number. Then print is a keyword. In front of that we write the string. Whatever we write in double quotations will be displayed on the screen. So here we have written enter a number colon. So print command will display enter a number colon on the computer screen. User understands that okay I have to enter a number. So user is going to enter some number 4, 5, 15 whatever the number he wants. That number is going to be read and put into the variable number which we created previously by writing the command read number. Read is a keyword which reads the value from the user and puts that into a variable. Next we have written if number mod 2 this percentage sign that you see here it indicates mod operator number mod 2 equivalent to 0 then print even mod operator retains a remainder so number divided by 2 if remainder is 0 then 0 equal to 0 evaluates to true we print even if number mod 2 evaluates to 1 1 is equal to equal to 0 is false so the control moves to the else part and displays the odd on the screen here we have a command print odd simple after that end if that indicates the end of the if statement then stop after that we know that we can easily translate the pseudo code to a flow chart so if you can see here the oval shape indicates oval shape indicates the start and end of the program logic so here we have written start command in the oval shape then we know that rectangle shape is used to indicate operations like assignment expressions as well as declaring variables you can see here we use the rectangle shape to declare a variable dim number so program execution works something like this first the start command will get executed then dim number will get executed what is the meaning of dim number define a memory with the name number so what computer does means computer allocates one memory location and gives a name to it as number n u m b e r that is what the computer does after that the flow works something like this computer moves to the next instruction print enter a number you can see that we use the parallelogram shape to put the output expression output statement because parallelogram shape indicates input and output operations so here we have written enter a number what computer does means it takes the enter a number colon and displays that on the computer screen once the once enter a number colon will get display on the computer screen user understands that okay i have to enter some number i have to give some number to the computer so you, let's take user has entered some number 5 once the user enters the number 5 computer proceeds to the next statement that is it moves to the next statement read number read number also written in a parallelogram shape because parallelogram indicates the input and output operation read number what it does means it takes whatever the user has given here the user has given 5 and puts that into the variable number then the computer moves to the next instruction you can see that here we have written a condition in diamond shape because diamond shape indicates the decision operation or a condition you can see in the diamond shape we have written number mod 2 is equal to equal to 0 number mod 2 equal to equal to 0 that that operation is executed by the computer what computer does means it takes whatever the value in the number whatever the value in the number is 5 so it takes 5 mod 2 it calculates 5 mod 2 is actually equivalent to 1 because if you divide 5 by 2 2 to the 4 remainder will be 1 you can see that we know that mod operator returns the remainder then that return value will be compared with 0 whether 1 equal to equal to 0 false you can see here this expression as it has evaluated to the false computer moves to the next instruction that is the false part or else part there we have a statement written print odd so what computer does it displays odd on the screen it displays odd on the screen now user sees that okay by seeing this odd he understands that 5 is a odd number then after that computer moves to the stop instruction then the program will be terminated very simple i hope you guys have understood how do we write an algorithm how do we translate it to a pseudocode how do we translate the pseudocode to a flow chart by referring the shapes available in the 
flowcharts and how the program execution happens or how do we solve a problem step by step by using a computer. I suggest you people to try by providing another number and understand how the flow of execution of the program works. For this tutorial, this much is enough friends. In the next tutorial, we solve one more problem and understand how do we design the solution to the problem. For more benefits, please subscribe and don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.